unstoppable. That is the word of choice for today, looking at the 10-year bond yield, which just hit a new high on the year, just shy of 4.15%, and it seems like there's no sign in stopping. In today's video, we'll be covering the current trends we are seeing in the stock market. We also are going to be covering some S&P technical analysis, some key levels that broke down today that we want to talk about that have been holding really, really nice this week. And then we also have some charts and some stock analysis to do at the end. So stay tuned. We got Tesla and Netflix recent earnings reports. We're going to cover some of those charts here at the end of this video. So stay tuned. If you guys want more videos just like this, consider hitting that thumbs up button and consider subscribing here to the Stock Trends channel. No BS, just the charts, just the data, just the facts. That's what it's all about here. So we start with the 10 year, which is pretty much where we left off at the end of the prior video that we have just released a couple days back. Now, what's really important to note here is that in that video, we're not going to re, you know, cover that. You guys can go back and, and, and look at the correlations that we pretty much dialed in that the correlation is pretty simple this year. 10 year goes up, essentially bond yields in general go up, stock market goes down. And it's a pretty decent correlation. They're pretty easily correlated and you can see it pretty clearly when looking at the charts. And again, that was our last video. Highly recommend you check it out. But what's really interesting right now is that as we look at the 10 year breaking out to new highs, we had a resistance level here at around 4%. As the 10 year breaks out to new highs, we jump back to the S&P. Here's SPX. We have a bunch of levels charted out to the downside. A couple of them have actually hit, but the next one is down here towards around 3,400. That could be in the cards if we see further downside. And this correlation continues to pan out. Now, it's not a day-to-day -day perfect correlation like the second the 10-year goes higher, the 10-year yield goes higher, the market must go down. But generally speaking, watching the 10-year and watching DXY, watching the dollar, that's been pretty helpful to guide you in terms of where the stock market's generally going to head. The 10-year yield and the dollar going up has generally led to more pressure in the stock market. Now, we closed at a really interesting spot today. Let's dive in. Zoom ourselves in. Here's SPX, some gaps to fill. We actually filled this gap, so let me get rid of this guy. And let's talk about what happened here. So we had a gap down back here from the 6th to the 7th of October, then a gap up from the 17th to the 18th. We essentially filled those gaps. We pretty much gapped the gap, if you want to say that. So we end up closing the 17th right here and then opening the next day all the way up here, which ended up gapping up over this entire gap. But the thing is, we ended up back filling it that day and uh, falling off to the downside. So with that set up, now that leads us into what just happened today. Well, it's pretty pretty interesting and it's going to be really interesting how this ends up shaking out the next couple of days or the rest of this week after these earnings which we're going to talk about in just one second so right now we are technically still holding up let me get rid of this vwap to make this nice and clean we are technically still holding up really really nicely on this area that we had hit highs on the 17th back on monday so we're kind of perched up around the top of this level, holding, holding, holding for now, as this was a prior area of resistance. We got above, acted as support, and now we tested down into it, but we came back up and closed relatively strong over that level compared to what it looked like about an hour and a half prior to the market closing. So we also have to pay attention to this right here. So this area that we are currently in it has been literally the area that was support over the past couple of days. So the market's actually playing out pretty cleanly on, let's say, a short term, you know, day to day time scale. When you look at things like this, so if you're an active trader, you're actually kind of seeing things or there's a good chance you're actually seeing this pretty well. And what we see right now is that this area that was acting as support was a demand zone over the past day and a half is now your supply zone. So if we end up above this zone, which happens to be on SPX, I'd say if we end up above 3,700, that would be a breach above this zone and looks like we're going to see further upside as long as we can hold this zone, which goes down to about 3,685 as our support. So under 3,685 from here, the weaker it looks. Okay, the further under that level, the weaker we look. Now, we do have some other gaps to talk about here. Now, technically speaking, there's this gap right here that we could backfill down to the downside here, which should take us down to about, what is that, 3585. So there's a decent amount of, you know, there's a decent range back to the downside here, and that wouldn't be the end of the world. The next really key area of support to watch if we do lose this area 
would be down into that range. Why? That was a really crucial spot the week before CPI or leading up to CPI, and then ended up being our area we held on Friday and then gapped up from there. So this area down around 3585 is going to be a crucial spot if we do test it in the near future. And the reason why we're talking about the downside first here is because based on that 10-year correlation, that 10-year yield correlation, what has led us until maybe right now has led us to believe that that correlation is no longer going to be valid. Either we're going to see the S&P start to rally higher and we're going to really start to disconnect from that correlation where the 10-year yield, other bond yields going up means the S&P should start to fall off to the downside. We're going to fall away from that correlation and now we see relative strength across the S&P or across stocks or that correlation is going to live up to its expectations and we're going to see downside. Now, of course, it's very possible that the 10-year could come crashing down tomorrow or the next day, and then that could be the fuel to send us even higher on the market. And then, of course, that correlation still stands. But until proven otherwise, it does look pretty strong. So that's all we're looking at right now across the board. We do also want to point out the VIX before we dive into some other charts, before we dive into some more data, and then get into Tesla and Netflix. The VIX, again, big picture on the VIX here, uh, we are pretty much just rejecting up into this resistance like we just did last week and falling back off to the downside for now. Now, if we do see some downside, wouldn't be surprised if the VIX starts to perk up a little bit more, but kind of dealing with these lower highs. So the VIX needs to get up over 35 bucks for us to break that lower high trend. And so far, it just hasn't happened. Now, take a look at this chart. If you want to be bullish, this is an interesting chart for you. This is also not a chart to look at from the day-to-day -day perspective, like thinking the market needs to go up tomorrow, okay? This is a big picture chart. This is dating back to 2008, okay? When we saw the 2008 crash back here, which ended up bottoming in March of 2009, what you see right here is a sentiment composite kind of opportunity versus risk factor that we're pulling out. And All Star Charts does a cool job with this chart over the years, and what it's telling us right now is that we have actually, based on the past decade and a half, we actually are seeing major opportunity based off of sentiment, put call ratios, all of that stuff that we've talked about in the past. Now, what's really fascinating about this bear market is that it feels like, and then of course that could be proven otherwise in a very short period of time, it feels like sentiment, put call ratios, a lot of these factors that we are now at levels we haven't seen since COVID crash, since 2008, 2009, those lows, those bottoms, it seems like a lot of those things are signaling based off historical levels and historical numbers that we might actually be closer to a bottom than many think. However, it just doesn't feel like that in the markets. And of course, that's generally speaking over history when we've seen big reversals. Now, we're not going to sit here and say that means go bullish, right? Because of course, it doesn't have to. And like we're talking about before, the 10-year actually signals more of a bearish move. And if we take a look at that, back to that SPX chart, it actually, again, on the short-term scale, if we hold this area now to be resistance, it's actually, we're actually looking bearish. We're looking to make, you know, lower highs and lower lows, at least in the near term. But the big picture looking out across weeks and months, it is somewhat interesting, the situation and the environment that we are really in right now with bearish sentiment and how things just feel almost like there's no end in sight, there's no hope. And again, I think the 10-year really emphasizes that point, just kind of slowly gliding higher day after day after day. Now, one more thing to quickly note, big economic releases. Okay, we had Tesla earnings on Wednesday afternoon. We had Netflix earnings on Tuesday afternoon. We've got jobless claims now on Thursday morning. This is a, is a case where the higher the number that this comes in, technically the better the stock market should do. The last report I believe we came in, or at least in the past, we've had some pretty low jobless claims reports. And what ends up happening was the stock market actually sold off pretty substantially off of those readings. Now, if this number comes in higher than expected, which is around 230,000, if it comes in higher than expected, this is something to keep an eye on to see if we can rally off of that. Now, this might also play a role in the 10-year yield as well. A higher number here might tell the Fed that they potentially have a little bit less runway to keep raising rates into next year, dare we say. And so that's going to be kind of where the 10-year may start to pull back, the yield may pull back, and the market may rebound if this number comes in a little hot. So that's something to keep in mind for 8.30 a.m. So if you see some volatility around then, just be careful. That is why. 
check those numbers. It could be a really good, you know, a good, a good guide for the day on Thursday. Um, Friday, we have inflation expectations. Pretty cool. But when inflation expectations start to really roll over, which they actually have been in terms of what people are expecting, that's generally a good sign that inflation is topping and uh, we start to see some substantial backside in the near term. That's just historical data right there. Okay, Tesla comes in here. Tesla, they miss on revenue and they beat on earnings. Earnings comes in at 105 uh, share versus 99 cents estimated and then the revenue comes in at 21.45 billion versus an estimated 21.96. Now if we jump over to the charts and pull up Tesla, we'll jump over to Netflix next. It's funny if you want to go back a couple of videos ago, uh, we did talk about Netflix because the chart was really really intriguing. A few weeks back, of course, we talked about how there's earnings coming up, so be careful, but looking back, hindsight is kind of funny. Tesla sits down here at around 2:10 in the after hours. Not terrible. It came down to just about 206.40 or so uh, off the initial reaction and then now popped back up and this now falling back off a little bit. It's pretty much going to be in line, at least tomorrow, with the lows of this year so far. If you broaden this chart out to the one year or the last, that's like the last year, you know, we made those new lows here back on the 14th, Friday the 14th, and we're probably going to be testing down to those levels, especially if we get a weak stock market as well on Thursday and or Friday. That'll be the test. Big picture on Tesla, 180, 180. First off though, let's understand the 200 hour level will be a psychological area of support. Okay, it's a whole number. Let's draw a line there as well. It's a whole number. It'll be a pretty nice line in the sand, but below 200 bucks, we're looking down towards 180. That's where Tesla bottomed out back in 2021, two times and balanced very nicely and then had some really good upside from that level. Next is Netflix, guys. So we talked about Netflix and we said, hey, Netflix over 250 looks really interesting because we got a huge gap down off of earnings from back here in late April, right? Huge gap down where Netflix was sitting here at like 340 and then next day is trading down here under 240. Insane. We broke over that 250 and it had a nice move up. Here's what you want to see on Netflix. First off, 200 moving average. I mean, you, you got pretty darn close, almost a perfect touch to that level this past day and rejection. I mean, I mean beautiful. It's 281.22 is the 200 moving average. And what do we hit today as a high? Pretty much line up with the highs of the after hours yesterday. And we hit up to about 279, just north of 279. So within like two bucks of that 200 moving average. So pretty good spot to potentially look at. If you looked back and said, hey, you know, we had highs here around 279 and the after hours yesterday, we got the 200 moving average sitting right up here. I might look to, to scale into a short position at some point up in this area, stop loss up here, take profit maybe back down towards, I don't know, 270, 275. Could have been a really good trade today uh, based on the chart for Netflix. That said, big time gap up, right? If the market's weak, this could be a really, oppor a really good opportunity for downside for a backfill back to about 250. If Netflix finds itself sneaking on back down to 50, market starts to get weak or starts to base build a bottom, that could be a much cleaner trade to the upside. And again, there will be no earnings risk there because you already have now waited for earnings to pass us by. And now Netflix essentially just back tested, held a key area that was resistance to become support and gives you a very clean trade to the upside. That would be a really nice bull trade to play out for more of a swing. But the key here is going to be that 200 moving average. Above that 200 moving average, guys, there's not much volume all the way up until about 3.30. So gap fill up to 3.30 could offer some really nice guidance. And again, even if you're going to swing trade Netflix from here, keep risk in mind. If you're going to risk down to about that 50 SMA or below that, you know, 248 or so area, just a couple of dollars below 250, it still offers decent risk reward. You know, let's just say, you know, you're going to buy, you want to wait till after the earnings. Even if you did wait till after the earnings and you are bullish on this stock and think it has much more room and more legs, you could have a simple, uh, a simple trade like this, where you're going to risk down to about, you know, 245, whatever the number is with a reward up to that gap fill still gives you from here about a positive 2.23 risk reward ratio, which is pretty darn good. So obviously a back test is best. But uh, again, don't get faked out if the market goes way, way lower. We stay in terms of this risk off environment. This could easily just be whoop, one of those fake out moves if the market is going to go substantially lower 
uh, in the near term uh, going forward. So someone to keep in mind, just like anything else, you're in a stock, you're in a swing trade, company's great, momentum on that stock is great, but if the overall market is horrible or it's going the opposite way in a pretty substantial fashion, you gotta be aware of that. That's gonna add to pressure on the stock that you're watching and all that good stuff. With that said, this platform right here is TradingView. There'll be a link to TradingView in the video description box and pinned comment down below. Also, if you're looking for a new broker, check out Interactive Brokers. We'll leave a link to them in the description box as well as other great links and resources for you to take advantage of. This channel, these videos will always be free. If you want more, hit that thumbs up button and consider subscribing. We don't have a strict posting schedule as we always say, so maybe that bell notification is not a bad idea. We post between two, three, or four videos per week. That's generally the average. And if you have other stocks that you want us to cover in the future, leave them down below and we'll add them to the back end of the videos going forward in the next couple of weeks. Thanks so much and we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.